If you've been in abusive relationships or toxic relationships, or you've just been with people who are generally unavailable, you might be asking yourself, well, what does real connection actually look like? Like, how do I know the difference between something real and something that's just based on lust and attraction? That's what I'm gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna to be talking about what it looks like in a relationship, but also what it looks like in the dating phase so that you can figure out what you're dealing with when you're talking to somebody. So how do you know when it's real healthy connection versus just lust or infatuation? So the first thing is that you guys have shared values. So what do I mean by shared values? You both want the same things out of life. Not, not like every single thing, but the big things, like you both have the goal of getting married and having children someday. That's a shared value. Or maybe you both wanna travel. Maybe you wanna structure your life around being free to travel all over the world. That would be another value. Now, when you're going into this in the dating phase, it's let's say, for example, that you wanna get married. This doesn't necessarily mean that you want to get married to this person and they wanna get married to you. It just means that you have that as your end life goal. You wanna be married to somebody, and so you're dating to figure out who that person is going to be. That's a shared value. Another shared value would be religion. Like you both have the same religion and that is important to you. I'm not saying here that you have to have the same religion, but for some people, that is one of their most important things that they value in a partner. So this is all personal, but what we're talking about here is the values that you have, do they match with what this person's values are so that you can be compatible and live a good life together? For me personally, when I was going through this dating process, I valued communication. I like to talk, I like to share a lot, and I wanted to be with somebody who was the same way. That was one of the things that was really important to me, and that's what I looked for. So again, this is very personal here, but shared values are what form real connection. Basically, we're looking for something deeper here. We're looking for something more than just, ooh, this person is making my body feel things. We're looking for more than just that physical attraction piece. Now, I'm gonna throw out a disclaimer here. There is nothing wrong with physical attraction. Physical attraction is an important part of a relationship. The thing we need to shift about physical attraction here when we've had a lot of toxic relationships is we wanna look for more than that, beyond that. It's actually very personal as far as how much value you place on physical attraction. For some people, it's very important. They wanna have a very active, intimate life, and so for them, the physical attraction is a very high priority. And for some people, it's not. For some people, the other things are more important to them and the physical attraction is more like a side dish to the main course of what their relationship means for them. There's no right or wrong here. It's all very personal. So I recommend taking some time to really get honest with yourself and say, okay, how important is physical attraction to me? And again, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because if we're looking for real connection, we do want to look beyond the physical attraction because if you've gotten into toxic relationships, it's highly likely that you got there because you were following that physical attraction. So we want to look big picture here at what this person is bringing to the table beyond just the physical stuff. So what else makes up a real connection? Well, the fact that you can share things with each other, you can share your thoughts, you can share your feelings, and you're not judged, you're not criticized, you feel accepted and understood. Now, this doesn't mean the other person is going to understand every single thing about your experience or they're going to get every single thing that you share, but they're open to hearing it. And again, they're not judging you and they're not criticizing you. And they do the same thing back. This is really important here because if any of you have been in a relationship with someone who is emotionally unavailable, you know that you can be very free in sharing your stuff, but they may not reciprocate that. So when you're having a real connection, you are sharing and they are sharing right back. We don't want, again, a one-sided relationship. That's not a real connection. Both people have to be bringing themselves to the relationship and sharing with each other. 
The next component of a real connection is you feel safe with this person. There's like a, like a sense of camaraderie with this person. Like you just get each other. It's, it's easy. And this is very different from the familiarity that, and connection that you might feel with someone who isn't good for you, who actually reminds you of the dynamic that maybe you had with your mother or your father. We're not talking about that kind of connection, but just a general sense of like, this person gets me. Yeah, like I really, um, I'm gonna say the word jive, but I feel like that's gonna date me. Too late, <laughs> it's out there. But you really, I, I think the, the word that most people use now is vibe. You really vibe with this person. It feels like, yeah, it's, this is just easy. It just kind of flows. That's a real connection. You also feel like you can relate to each other. Again, not, not in every single aspect of your lives, but in general, you do have a sense that, yeah, I, I get where this person's coming from. What they're sharing with me, yeah, it makes sense. And then moving into the relationship phase, you feel like this person has your back and you have their back too. Like you feel like this is, this is a soft space for me to land. This person is gonna be there for me. They've shown that and you do the same for them. So now let's talk about what the physical attraction piece looks like in a real connection versus something that's just lust and infatuation. So the way I differentiate this is a real connection. It's more of a slow burn type of dynamic versus a toxic relationship where the attraction is really unhealthy, that's more of an unconscious pull towards someone and the attraction can be really intense and it's usually there right from the get-go. It's big, it's like fireworks compared to a slow burning fireplace, for example. In a healthy connection for most people, the attraction is calmer. And if you've had those intense attractions in the past, you might be in this healthy dynamic and you might be questioning your own attraction. Like, do I like this person enough? Am I attracted enough? That's actually usually a sign that this is a healthy attraction because it's so much less intense than that toxic dynamic where it's so much unconscious stuff is coming up and it's so intense and it's like a roller coaster. This is much more calm. And here's the big difference here. The physical attraction in a healthy connection, it's not the main thing that keeps you together. It's part of what keeps you together. And I can share from my experience, in my toxic relationships, the physical attraction was the thing that kept that relationship together. Because honestly, nothing else in that relationship really was that great. And so when you're having a real connection versus just a lust connection, again, the physical piece it's just part of it. It's not the whole thing that's keeping that connection going. And you may be able to relate to this too. Maybe in your past relationships, the attraction was the only thing that was keeping the relationship together. That feeling of like, I'm attracted to him and I'm with him in spite of all the bad things that are going on. This is why I'm here. I'm attracted to him. In a real connection, in a healthy connection, it's different. That's just a bonus. You, you have that base level of connection and compatibility. And yeah, awesome, I'm attracted to them too. That's what it feels like. If you need help figuring this stuff out in real time, I, I get it. I actually don't recommend trying to break the cycle of toxic relationships by yourself. It's really hard. And what I tell people is if we could have done it by ourselves, we would have done it a long time ago. So get support in this. This is something that I help women do in my 12 week living free finding love program. I'm gonna leave the link here in the description. You can click on that to learn more about it. But yes, get some help here. You do really need that objective support. You need someone outside of you telling you either, yes, this is a red flag, don't go forward, don't proceed, or no, actually this is just like normal conflicts that people have in relationships. You can work this out. And in that program, that's just part of what I do. I also help you release all of the subconscious stuff that's holding you back from being able to let healthy love in. All of the emotional baggage, all of the negative beliefs that you're carrying around, like that you're not good enough, like that you can't trust anyone, that's what I help you shift. So again, click on the link in the description. Now, if you wanna know what a healthy relationship really looks like, 
click on this link here, I have a video for you, and click here to subscribe. I come out with new videos every single week for breaking the cycle of toxic relationships and creating healthy relationships.